All right, was that a loaded question or what? Okay. All right. Okay, you guys, you have to excuse that. I haven't medicated for a while. Uh, and I say that in all seriousness. I, uh, for the last 14 years, I've been a medical cannabis patient. And uh, about 14 years ago, I had to go on full disability. I, I, have, uh, I was diagnosed with... Uh, uh, fibromyalgia with severe migraines. I was on uh, uh, experimental drugs for my migraines and uh, pharmaceutical meds always turned me up short. After tens of thousands of dollars, ah, I see you. After tens of thousands of dollars, I uh, uh, and uh, a whole lot of suffering, I finally said, "What the heck? You know, it couldn't hurt for me to try cannabis." After three weeks, thank you, Peter. The, uh, my problems with my memory, which my illness has stripped me of my memory, I could actually hold a conversation again. Not only, not only that, my memory started coming back. So if you, when you hear the powers of be say that cannabis destroys your memory, it's a bunch of bull. Actually, each and everything that our government says about cannabis is bull. I'm kind of getting a sneaking suspicion that I'm preaching to the choir. Which is really not really what I'm about, you know, and it's really not what we should be about. I mean, times like this is great. I love getting together with a bunch of people like yourselves, good people, people who know the truth. But we got to be doing more than that. We need to be out in our communities. We need to be talking to people, people who don't know. People don't know the truth. They don't know the truth because we don't tell them. We have to start doing that. That means all those places where you guys don't want to go, places like in the churches, folks, they're not believers because we haven't told them the truth. They need to hear the truth. They all need to hear the truth. You need to be talking to your parents. You need to be talking. Listen, okay, the people I talk to are people who deal with chronic illness. What's chronic illness? You guys know? Okay, here's the difference. If you guys have a headache and you take a Tylenol, your headache goes away, all is cool, right? If you have chronic illness, you take medicine. Two hours later, you have to take medicine again. Two hours later, you take medicine again and again for the rest of your life. That's chronic illness, okay? That is autoimmune disease in most cases, okay? These are illnesses like I'm talking about, like multiple sclerosis, like Parkinson's disease, like epilepsy. You know, you all know people who suffer from these conditions? Chances are you guys got somebody in your family who's dealing with it, because every family does. What's more, every, fa every person on the face of this earth will deal with chronic illness at some time in the course of your lives. You guys are young, you're healthy, that's really, that's, that's super, that's cool. I'm sorry, at some point in your life you're going to get sick. You are going to suffer from chronic illness. When you do, guess what? The one, the only medicine that is going to be effective in treating virtually all chronic illness, in some regard, is cannabis. If you don't believe it, don't talk to me. Okay. I'd be more than happy to try to straighten you out. Because I've been with the people. I've been with people with terminal cancer. I know. I've talked to them. I've been with people who have have progressive MS. I've sat beside their wheelchairs. I've sat beside their beds. I've talked to these people. I've talked to people who've been on the other side, who have come back from being bedridden to being in a wheelchair, to being up on crutches, to being to getting around. I've, I've stood next to people and talked with people whose arms were atrophied and they've straightened out. I've seen it firsthand. We're talking something here that is a miracle drug. I don't care what anybody says it is. This is God's medicine. We have to get out and talk to people. Each and every day that goes by, somebody out here is suffering. I have already talked to a number of people who are here who are suffering. People who are dealing with serious illness. Guys, listen, I have nothing against recreational use of cannabis. I used to be a recreational user when I was in, in college myself. I quit for 20 years. 
You know why I came back? Because I got sick. Don't wait till you get sick. We have to address this problem now. We have to get involved. We've got to change it for the, for the sake, for our sake, for the sake of our parents, for our grandparents, for our brothers, our sisters. You know, we have to, we have to do something now. Thank you. Uh, about two weeks ago, I was called to, to travel to Iowa. Up in Iowa, they got some really cool things going on. There's a guy up there by the name of Carl Olson. He's a friend of mine. But Carl has done some pretty novel things. He has actually sued the, the pharmaceutical board for Iowa, the Iowa Pharmaceutical Board. Very, very remarkable thing he did. He sued them on the basis that, well, as, as it turns out, there are two federal legal patients within the borders of Iowa. If you all know about the IND program, that's called the Investigator, Investigative New Drug Program. It's been going on since the 70s. Since the 70s, the federal government has been providing cannabis to a select small group of people. Our federal government, now this is the people who say there is no medicinal value in cannabis. They've been providing medical cannabis to a small group of people since the 1970s. Two of those people I've interviewed on camera, uh, it's Barb Douglas, who suffers from progressive MS, and uh, George McMahon, who also suffers from autoimmune disease. Folks, there are people who are saying, the cannabis is grown down at the University of Mississippi. I don't know, how, all you people probably already know all this, don't you? No, maybe not. Because they don't want you to know about it. What they would like to have happen is they want to see those people just very quietly die and pass away. So you all don't have to know about it. Montel Williams has been talking a lot about it. If you catch his program on uh, Air America, and if you all don't know it, uh, Montel Williams suffers from MS. Montel Williams can't even put his feet on the floor in the morning without medicating because he suffers from from uh, neuropathy of the feet. That's a condition I'm very well aware of because with my with my my uh, fibromyalgia, I suffer from neuropathy in my hands and my feet. It's pain like. It's pain like uh, like needles going into your feet and stuff. You guys still hear me? Cool. Anyway, uh, so, you know, it's these things are real conditions. Anyway, back up in Iowa. When I was up there, there was uh, something like over 30 people got up to testify before the pharmaceutical board. This They're holding hearings all over the state of Iowa to... Uh, so they can make a decision whether or not they want to say, yes, cannabis needs to be rescheduled. Currently, cannabis is, is considered a Schedule One drug, which means cannabis has no medicinal value. If it's moved to at least a Schedule Two, it means that people will be able to start getting cannabis to treat their medical conditions. So that's what, we're, that's what they're about up there. I'll be, I'll, I will be returning. It's a cool thing. I'm going to be returning in November to take and cover the last of the, of the, of the hearings, and that's uh, going to be someplace close to the Nebraska border. So, folks, if you haven't been following newspapers, if you haven't, get on Facebook, find me, I will connect you. Okay? That's what it's all about. That's exactly what it's all about. Hey, guys, I'm not out here for my health. If I was out here for my health, I'd be in some quiet little corner smoking my cannabis. But I don't want to see this anymore, folks. I've got grown kids myself, okay? My kids need to have medical cannabis available for them. I want to see it available for each and every one of you. The only way we're going to do that is if we get out and start talking to people. If you don't know how, ask Kelly. Kelly knows how. Kelly's a great guy. Kelly's, look, look around. You can see how good a job Kelly does. And the whole, whole great bunch of people that are from here from Joplin and, and the neighboring area. A bunch of good people. One of the people who I've, I've been working with.